that's really important because when we're talking about retirement income, we go back to step one. What's your social security and how can we maximize it? What's your pension choice and how can we maximize it? And what is that shortfall we need to cover? And there's a few ways we can cover that shortfall. We could do it with an annuity or we could do it with something that I call a bridge, which is not a real financial term. It's just something I use to explain to clients how to increase lifetime income streams that are deferring. So going back to social security, um, you know, and pension, here's a statistic that's real. 80% of Americans take social security and their pension to their detriment rather than to their advantage. And that is a function of a lot of different things. Um, you know, bad information, um, you know, underestimating life expectancies, um, fear that the government's going to go broke and they're not going to honor their obligations. There's a lot of different reasons why that happens. We use a software from Professor Lawrence Kutlikoff. Just like Tom Hegna is to retirement, Professor Lawrence Kutlikoff is the economist when it comes to Social Security and Social Security maximization. Number one authority in the world that's like universally agreed upon amongst all people in retirement. Like Professor Kutlikoff is the professional. He has a software we subscribe to. So I'd want to get his earnings record. I'd want to get some details about his pension and how he paid into it. There's a few questions I'd have. We'd put it in the software. It would tell us exactly what he could expect from social security at different durations. And we can even take this part-time job at the golf course. Now he'll be paying, I'm assuming he'll be paid as a W-2 employee of the golf course part-time. Right. He'll pay some bank tax that might get him his additional credits. We can figure out what social security will be. Now here's what's interesting though. He's 58, so he can get his pension. He's not eligible for social security till at least 62. Unless his spouse passed away and he's getting a widow's uh, benefit, which I'm assuming is not the case, not the then case. his oh. retirement, yeah, his earliest retirement date would be 62. So there's a shortfall there, even with his part-time work, he's right at break even, but I mean, we know the reality of life. I know you overestimate his expenses, but stuff's gonna come up and we have inflation. So really we probably are a little short. So we have a couple options here we could look at for him. We could, we could try to understand where he's at in terms of would he be comfortable with using some type of bridge? Because there are ways through something called a 72 T where you could get money out of different retirement accounts before 59 and a half, you can create like a, and again, this is, you know, this is more for the CPA to answer, but like you can create an equal stream of payments coming out of your retirement account and use something called a 72 T to get money out before 59 and a half without a penalty. But I don't even think we need to go there right, right now. What we could be talking about would be just a bridge. And so a bridge is becoming more and more popular for helping people to maximize retirement income. Because when you have different streams of income that are growing year by year, like pension, social security, and annuity, the longer you delay those streams of income, the more you're going to get for the rest of your life. So there's a really simple, you know, basic calculation you can do to say, okay, if I have assets in a savings account and I can preserve my liquidity to the level I need it to handle emergencies, would it be appropriate to use some of those assets like a buffer to create income so I could defer those other assets so I get a higher amount for the rest of my life? What's going to be better? Would that money in the savings produce enough for the rest of my life to equal what I would get if I could defer these streams of income? And we just look at that. If the answer is no, then a bridge strategy can make a lot of sense.